Welcome to DA Talk, an exploration into the world of Thetis and its long history of faith and conflict. Today's feature is Varric Tethers, popular storyteller and paragon of manliness. As a confirmed companion for the Inquisition, and a former compatriot of Hawk, the champion of Kirkwall, it is only natural to further include him into the tale. A surface dwarf, son of the once famed Tethers clan, and his true love, Bianca, let us peer into the story of Varric Tethers, a man who loves the sound of his own voice, but remains silent of his own tale. Varric Tethers was born approximately the first year of the Dragon Age. He's a rogue, armed with his trusty crossbow Bianca and well-versed in storytelling and exaggeration. His stories are always grand and pompous, especially his rather infamous story of the life of the champion. Unlike the rest of the Tethers clan, he is a surface dwarf and lived all his life in Kirkwall. He runs a spy network that mingles with many of the Dwarven Merchant Guild and higher-ups in Kirkwall. He previously had dealings with the Karza, and sometimes he shoots people. Nevertheless, Varric is kind. He uses his connections to help his friends, like Anders staying safe in Darktown and Fenris occupying Daenerys' estate. He even keeps nicknames for those he cares about, small signs of endearment like calling Isabella Ravaini and Meryl Daisy. A very crafty, quick-witted dwarf, but with heart. The origins of Varric's family stem from Paragon Tethers, previously Paragon Garen's son. In the Exalted Age, Tethers was mistakenly found guilty of murdering his sister, an act actually performed by the Carta, an infamous dwarven criminal group. In respect for Tethers' death, Paragon Garen took the Tethers' name, thus creating the noble house Tethers. Fast forwarding to the Blessed Age, Lord Anvar Tethers, Varric's father, was found guilty of fixing the provings. Duels fought in an arena where fighters engage for various reasons. Honor, settling a score, revenge. Whatever the reason, a win promotes the voice of the ancestors. For manipulating these matches, the entire Tethers' house was exiled to the surface. What was once a noble house now lies topside. Depending on the actions of Hawk, Bartrand was the head of the Tethers clan on the surface. After his father's death, Bartrand took the helm to support the great Tethers name. He led an expedition, accompanied by his brother Varric, Hawk, and many others. In one of the deepest parts of the Deep Roads, the expedition found an undiscovered primeval tig, and what's more mysterious, an idol crafted with red lyrium. Lyrium the world has never seen before. The Shaper did not even know of his existence. Bartrand betrayed Varric and the expedition by escaping with the idol, but at a cost. In stealing the idol, he became progressively insane. Bartrand became a victim of raw red lyrium and its degenerative effects, as it slowly removed his inability to rationalize anything beyond the song. After barricading himself in a house in Hightown, he killed many and forced darkspawn blood on others without him knowing. Hulk has the ability to end his pain by having Varric kill him, or allow Varric to send Bartrand to the sanitarium. On a return to the house, however, Varric was also left with another choice, whether to keep the small piece of red lyrium. By refusing Varric that piece, Hulk gives the lyrium to Sandal to make a powerful rune. However, giving Varric the piece also allows him to improve Bianca but it remains to be seen whether Varric will undergo the same effects that plagued his older brother. Bianca One name, many stories. Hawk knows Bianca as the crossbow Varric keeps, made by Garav, a carter dwarf that Varric previously worked with in the past. Bianca is the only repeating crossbow that has ever worked. Varric's told many stories to complement the naming of Bianca and how she came to be. One in a game of Wicked Grace against Paragon Branca, a gift from a mysterious old beggar, or from a crook merchant in Lowtown. But the truth is, Varric had a Bianca. The real Bianca. She was the original designer of the repeating crossbow and Varric's lover. In the Dragon Age comic Until We Sleep, while dreaming in the Fade, Varric recalls himself with Bianca, escaping the guild and fleeing Osthime. Though, Varric realizes it's only a dream. And with heartbreak, he leaves the Fade and Bianca, still a tormenting memory living in her life's work, carried day to day by Varric. A story that, hopefully, we will see further explained in Inquisition. Varric will join the Inquisition this fall, 
The Inquisition will greatly test Varric's demeanor and loyalty, as made example of in the Pax Prime demo where the Inquisitor willingly let Crestwood Village burn to the ground. For the Inquisition? Or the greater good? Who knows? Three distinct elements from Varric's past may further influence his standing in the trials to come. Bartrand, the Idol, and Bianca. Hawk controls Bartrand's fate, whether to save or kill him. If he is dead, the deed is done, no further worry can possibly come of it. However, keeping Bartrand alive will have him standing as a husk of the greedy yet proud dwarf he once was, and in most cases still in the sanitarium. The effects of that red lyrium against Bartrand may have way more intense effects, and may be worthwhile to the Inquisition. Secondly, the idol. The idol made Bartrand mad, but Varric may share his brother's fate if Hawk gave him the idol piece. Illyrium was embedded in Bianca, gameplay-wise adding rune slots and strengthening its power. There's a chance that Varric will go crazy from having it in his possession. Whether this will affect his demeanor or cause him to suffer the same voice as Bartrand heard is uncertain. Third is Bianca. While her story was touched upon in the comic, little was mentioned about the true Bianca. After realizing what happened to the original Bianca, it's hard to imagine Varric is over her death. He is consistently anthropomorphizing his crossbow as Bianca and hiding who the real one was truly and what she meant to him. Varric's status as a romanceable character is still unknown, but his past and what seems to be an incapability to let go of Bianca may haunt him in the future. Varric stayed with Hawk until the very end. When the Templars and Mages were at each other's throats, Varric was still there to fight. He may stay the full course with the Inquisitor despite what troubles lie ahead, just as he did with Hawk, or we may see Varric resent or possibly leave the Inquisitor. He loves a good tale. We'll see this fall whether he stays alive to tell it. That's the end of DA Talk. Let's bring up the question of the vid. What will make Varric loyal to the Inquisition? Leave your answer in the box below. Just a note, DA Talk will be postponed until after PAX East. I'll be there from April 10th to the 14th, writing from Boston during PAX East, so be on the lookout for more Dragon Age news and videos, as well as a special segment that will cover everything we know so far about Inquisition, right after PAX. Thank you for watching, leave your positive or negative thoughts in the box below. Take care, I will see you next time.